The Dragon Ball universe is known for its fighting and techniques. Some of those techniques came in handy in multiple times, saving our heroes from certain doom and enemies that will be typically far stronger than them. Today, we're going to be ranking the 10 best techniques in terms of power, importance, and just how iconic they are. To start things off at number 10, we have the Destructo Disc, also known as the Kenzai. This technique was initially created by Krillin, but over the time, the Z fighters adopted it as they're a part of the moveset. The technique itself is a disc-like shape of made of a key. It was shown to be able to slice through practically anything. During the Saiyan Saga, in its initial appearance, Krillin used it against Nappa. The Saiyan was far stronger than Krillin, but when using the Destructo Disc that differs in strength didn't seem to matter at all. It would have surely cut through Nappa if not for Vegeta's advice. In the Frieza Saga, Krillin is able to use this again to slice off Frieza's tail. Keep in mind that Frieza was in his second form. Frieza was at a power level that Krillin had no hope of matching at the time. Other fighters to use this technique include Cell, who used it against Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, Goku who used it against Boo Tanks and even Baby Vegeta against Mach Oob. Prior to their Terminator power, we saw Krillin use and control four of them at the same time against a god level Goku. And lastly, we saw Goku use it against Jiren in the Terminator power. The Destructo Disc is one to remember as it is Krillin's signature technique. Following the Destructo Disc, at number 9 we have the Tri-Bean, also known as the Ki-Koho. This is Tian Shen Han's signature technique, taught to him by Master Shen. This technique is so powerful that it's not only extremely dangerous for the person on the receiving end, but also for the person using the technique. These blasts are taking everything from me, but I must go on. The technique made its on-screen debut in the 22nd World Martial Arts Tournament in a fierce fight with Goku. Tien decides to use his trump card, the Ki Koho. Master Roshi warns Tien not to use it. He describes it as a frightening destructive power, many levels greater than even the Kamehameha. One of the more iconic times the Tribeam was used is against Semi-Perfect Cell. Tien had no choice but to hold him off, but he was absolutely no match for Cell. However, in using this technique, he was able to keep him at bay, showing just how powerful it is. The only people that use this technique in all of Dragon Ball includes TN and the Cell Juniors. This is an extremely memorable technique simply due to the fact that it increases the user's power immensely. At number 8, we have the Final Flash. This is a technique created by the Saiyan Prince Vegeta. While Vegeta has the Gallic Gun and the Big Bang Attack, the final flash proved to be the strongest between them. Last of it, Vegeta is suspended for nearly a minute. It requires an immense amount of ki and is definitely a planet busting attack. Vegeta created the technique during his first years in the room of spirit and time while training to fight the androids and cell. Using Super Saiyan Grade 2, Vegeta was able to best a semi perfect cell, but his pride got the better of him and he allowed cell to reach his perfection. In order to defeat his new foe, he utilized the final flash blowing up half Cell's body, but it left Vegeta exhausted and unable to fight much longer. Most recently, it was used against Jiren. The energy that Blast generated was so powerful that it actually scared Jiren, who was previously completed unfazed against a spirit bomb made up of Universe 7's strongest fighters. The final flash remains only in Vegeta's family throughout Dragon Ball. The only two people to use it are Vegeta and Trunks. As one of the strongest techniques in Vegeta's arsenal, it deserves as a spot as this list. At number 7, we have the Special Beam Cannon, also known as the Manko Sapo, Piccolo's signature technique. This move was created by Piccolo in order to defeat Goku during the 5 year time skip between Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Ultimately, his wish of killing Goku came true, which is what makes this technique so iconic. Not only it did result in the death of their foe Radix, but the special beam cannon was the attack that killed Goku. Without it, there's likely a chance that Goku and Piccolo would have both died along with the Earth. The downside of this technique is that it takes many minutes to charge up, but the result is an extremely powerful concentrated beam. In the manga, there was also a two-handed version of this technique only used once against Nappa. Funny enough, the people that use it the most aside from Piccolo are the villains. We see Cell and Boo Tanks use it. Piccolo also uses this technique combined with Gohan's Super Kamehameha in order to defeat Soul and Prina in the Terminator power. 
The special beam cannon will always be remembered as the technique that resulted in the death of Son Goku. Following the technique that killed Goku, let's talk about the technique that saved him and the Earth. At number 6, we have the Spirit Bomb, also known as the Ginkai Dama. This technique is basically Goku's trump card, the very last resort. Initially, it was created by King Kai. When Goku died against Radix, as a result of the special beam cannon, he was taught it. It was to be used against the Saiyans if all else failed. The Spirit Bomb is a scalable technique. The more key gathered from life forms, the stronger the attack. The only person to use this technique in all of Dragon Ball is Goku. He used this technique against Vegeta, Frieza, Kid Buu, and Jiren. It was also used against Omega Shenron and GT. In the movies, it was also used against Dr. Wheelow, Hurdles, Slug, and Super Android 13. The fight against 13 was especially important as instead of firing the beam directly, Goku absorbed its energy into his Super Saiyan form to give him a sizable power boost. We also see Future Trunks use a similar technique where he gathers the life force off the future civilians and powers his sword up. But most people don't consider this the Spirit Bomb. The same thing happened with Vegeta in the Moro arc where he gathered energy off of various fighters but people regard this as just a key collection rather than a full on Spirit Bomb like Goku's. This technique was used to save Earth and the universe more on one occasion, earning its spot on this list. Now we have to take a turn to a completely different kind of technique. This is one typically used by the bad guys, but it is extremely powerful and resourceful. At number 5, we have Absorption. The best example of a user for this technique is Majin Buu. Throughout the Buu arc, he absorbed multiple people and even before that. Initially, Majin Buu was a slim-like creature of pure evil, but after absorbing the Grand Supreme Kai and the South Kai, he became a light-hearted, still wanting to kill people just for fun creature. He also absorbs Gotenks, Piccolo, and Gohan. Every time he absorbs someone, he gets their traits. For example, Piccolo and Gohan will make him smarter. He can even recognize this in the manga. Explaining that Goten's strength combined with Piccolo's brain should allow him to beat Ultimate Gohan. But Boo isn't the only one. Cell is also known to use this technique through, he's mainly absorbed the androids. We see Cell absorb other powers and life forces, but he doesn't fully absorb those people, not like how he does with Android 17 and 18 who are fully transform him. The last major one to use absorption is Moro. Moro upscaled it to a completely new level by quite literally taking their life force. He also literally ate 73 just to gain his powers. There are many more that use absorption like Kindergard and Omega Shenron, but none compared to Cell, Boo, and Moro. Now we have yet another technique created by King Kai. If not for this, Earth would have been ashes as a result of the Saiyan's attack. At number 4, we have the Kaioken, also known as the King Kai Fist. This is unlike many other the techniques, as it's a direct power-up. Using Kaioken requires a great understanding of key and key control. Any miscalculations in using it could result in explosion in one's body. Though it was created by King Kai, Goku was the only person to ever use it successfully. When using it, the user gets an extreme in muscle size depending on the levels it's used at and a red fiery aura to go along with it. The initial version literally doubles the user's power which is why it's so powerful. The higher you take it, the bigger the multiplier and Goku was able to reach it 20 times. In theory, it could be taken as high as you want so long as you just don't blow your body to bits while trying. Its appearances includes the fight against Nappa, Vegeta, Ginyu, Frieza, and in Dragon Ball Z filler we saw Goku use it on top of Super Saiyan creating Super Saiyan Kaioken which matched the power of boost of Super Saiyan 2. Another reason why it's so resourceful. Then it lay dormant for quite a while until Dragon Ball Super. In the Universe 6 tournament, Goku using Kaioken on top of his Super Saiyan Blue form to amplify his power by 10 and match hit. Someone who's prior to the Kaioken being used was dominating Goku at every turn. Goku also uses it against Jiren and is able to take it to times 20 on top of Super Saiyan Blue. 
the Kaioken is just an insane power up and something that everyone loves to see Goku use. The next one is quite unique and special. While on the edge on defeat, an Ultra Instinct Goku is able to access a technique that amplifies his power immensely. There is no name for it yet, but it creates a projection of Goku, many times larger than himself. There is no name for it yet, but the community refers it as Goku Senunu Form, or a key avatar. Its only appearance in fight include the final fight against Moro and the final fight against Gast. Both times, this power was used as displayed great strength and pretty easily bested its opponents with no difficulty. We have yet to see or learn of its cause of origins and basically everything else you would want to know. But because of how powerful and cool it is, we'll put it in top 3. At number 2, we have the Fusion Dance. This is probably one of the most overpowered things in Dragon Ball. At any moment, two fighters of equal strength could become one with just a simple dance. Though, they do have to perform it properly. If you don't, you either become extremely skinny to the bone or extremely large. Goku was the one to learn this technique in the other world during his seven years of death. He learned it from the Metaron species who were the ones to initially create it. There's four people that have used this technique to this day. Goku and Vegeta with each other, and Goten and Trunks with each other. Gogeta has only been seen once in canon one time against Broly, though the debut was animated to perfection. Gotenks on the other hand has seen quite frankly. He was initially the last hope against Boo, who he fought repeatedly. Gotenks was able to use Super Saiyan 3, a power that neither Goten or Trunks had access to, which is extremely important. It means that the fusion can unlock further power that neither user had access to beforehand. Unfortunately, there is a limit on how long this can be used. It was believed that a fusion would last 30 minutes no matter what, but the Batara fusion is weaker because the more power you exert, the shorter the fusion. Goku and Vegeta when using Super Saiyan Blue were only Vegeta for a couple of minutes. Regardless of that, the technique is extremely powerful, important, and extremely iconic, which is why it's second. Now, if the fusion dance was second, what can be possibly higher? Well, I believe we all know what has always been number one. Goku's signature technique, the Kamehameha. This technique ages back quite a lot, but the first time it was seen was when Master Roshi used it again to blow up a mountain made of fire. It was actually the very first key attack used in Dragon Ball. It took Roshi 50 years to learn it, but Goku was able to replicate it in minutes later. It's been used more times than any other technique. Basically, in every fight Goku has been in, it's been used creatively. Goku had mastered it to the point where he could fire it up with one with his feet. When charged for a long amount of time, his key attack is transformed to be something much greater. Something we call the Super Kamehameha. Much like many of the other attacks, it's much stronger than the user. But the main reason for it being on top of this list is simply because how iconic it is. The first ever key blast used in Dragon Ball. The first ever key blast used by Goku in Dragon Ball. And something that stuck in the group throughout the entirety of Dragon Ball. Thank you guys for watching this video. Let us know what you agree or disagree with down below in the comments below. Like and subscribe and we'll see you next time in Dragon Ball Discussions. I'm your host, Vro, and I'll see you next time. Until then, peace.